the destiny uh, depends on what we are what we are choosing to do so based on whatever activities we have done in the previous lives <clears throat> the soul is actually transmigrating from uh, one body to another to another body in different types of bodies uh, right now uh, we are in the human form of body and this is a very special opportunity previously we might have been in the uh, we were we were definitely in the animal kingdom hmm, transmigrating in different different animal species uh, now whatever activities we did it may be that after, uh, before uh, you know 50 lives before we were human beings it may be so whatever activities we did uh, in our previous lives and the karma which is generated due to that the reactions which are generated due to that that is actually called as uh, sanchit karma the karma accumulated from all our previous lifetimes that is sanchit karma now the results of the of, of that karma that is sanchit karma we are we are supposed to get in this lifetime some results some results we got in the previous lifetime only like for example some good activity we did or any bad activity we did we got the result in the, in that lifetime only but some reactions of the previous uh, this sanchit karma have not yet fructified it is about to come in this lifetime for example uh, perhaps uh, in our previous life maybe uh, in human form of life we distributed water to the we distributed water to the um, to the people in hot summer season so that is a good activity that is actually a uh, pious activity so due to this pious activity or good activity we are supposed to get a result right so this giving water to the um, to the people in a scorching heat in a summer season so due to this good activity one is supposed to get one is supposed to take birth beside a river for example that is he will never have any uh, lack of water in this lifetime so uh, that is this is actually pradabdha karma that means he is supposed to get this benefit from what he did in the previous life so this is a good activity uh, now due to this good activity uh, he is supposed to for example till now he is not residing before the river now he is supposed to uh, start residing be beside the river uh, that is he will he will from from that time onwards in that life he will never have any scarcity of water there will be abundance complete abundance of water there will be no scarcity of water at all so that is whatever is remaining to be obtained in this lifetime due to the sanchit karma that is called as prarabdha karma so uh, now whatever actions we will perform in this lifetime that is not already determined that is not uh, fixed somebody somebody for example he he becomes a thief for example so uh, it is uh, he certainly one day he desires to uh, steal something right so this desire uh, to steal something it is not that this is fixed by the law of karma 
It's not that this is fixed, uh, fixed by, by, by destiny. It's not that destiny is fixing his desires at every moment that he is supposed to uh, act. But whatever we do, his choice is ours. If somebody wants to be a thief, if somebody wants to steal, it is his choice, right? But he will get the reactions of that either in this lifetime or in the next lifetime because it is breaking the uh, codes of religion. So according to law of karma, he will get the reactions for that. So in this way, our actions are not fixed uh, by the law of karma. Uh, but whatever we act, how we act, that reaction will be fixed. And that reaction we can get in either in this lifetime or we can get in the further lifetimes. So let's come to the next slide. Every karma is like an arrow shot. Now, uh, talking about this, uh, this particular aspect of, uh, of, of karma, uh, now one may ask this question. Uh, that we are we are wanting to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This is a desire, right? The desire to serve Krishna, the, the desire to uh, chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Now this desire, this is a spiritual desire actually. This is not coming under the jurisdiction of the law of karma. This is purely on the spiritual platform the soul the soul is always having this choice either you can serve the uh, material energy maya or he can serve the spiritual energy that is the internal energy of krishna this choice is always there uh, for the soul so uh, somebody in this lifetime, he came across devotees. For example, we all came across uh, some devotees in ISKCON. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, he gave us the process what Srila Prabhupada gave us. And that is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So, uh, now, um, this desire, uh, this desire, it is not under the jurisdiction of the law of karma. It is Krishna who is intervening in our lifetimes. Mm. So, uh, and that is actually uh, purely it is spiritual. So out of mercy, Krishna sends his devotees in our life and he mercifully uh, gives this process of Krishna consciousness, just like, for example, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada went to the Western countries, America, and he converted the hippies into followers of Krishna consciousness, into devotees. So, one of the one of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, he asked this question to Srila Prabhupada, that uh, Srila Prabhupada, we never did any good activity in this lifetime. How do we develop this uh, fortune or, or Sukriti that we, we could come across you and we could uh, practice this process of Krishna consciousness. We could chant this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So how we could, uh, you know, how we could get this process, how we could how you could have the facility and the fortune of getting this process of Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada told that I have created your fortune. So Prabhupada very clearly tell, told that you, you didn't do anything to get this fortune, but this is a causeless mercy of a pure devotee. This is actually called as mercy. By the mercy of your devotees like Srila Prabhupada, you come across uh, this process of Krishna consciousness and you get the fortune to accept this 
process of Krishna consciousness. So we, no one has the qualification that you know, due to this qualification, he is uh, he is bound to get, he is bound to uh, you know get this process of Krishna consciousness. No one can claim that I am qualified to serve Krishna. No one can claim that. But this qualification is given by the pure devotee. That is the power of the pure devotees of Krishna. So we are not qualified to serve Krishna. We were all rotting in the you know in the darkest regions of material existence. Uh, we were breaking the four regulatory principles. We didn't know about that. All these things, right? But who has created this? Uh, we are not qualified actually. But this qualification uh, was given to us by the mercy of pure devotees like Srila Prabhupada. If Prabhupada would not have been there, so who would have created this ISKCON society? This society of devotees which is there all over the world. If Prabhupada would not have uh, given the, the uh, books which are, which are the basis. Uh, books are the basis. Without this basis, how could we had uh, how could we have learned this process? How could we have understood this process so clearly? So that is the aspect of mercy. So that we have to understand this mercy of the pure devotee. It is not under the jurisdiction of the law of karma. And if one gets, if one receives that mercy and wholeheartedly, uh, you know, engages himself in surrendering to Krishna by receiving that mercy, then he actually gets out of this entanglement of law of karma. So, uh, so here it's, it says that every karma is like an arrow shot. Now arrow is like, um, is like a, an arrow. Once it is shot, it is fixed. One cannot return it back. Similarly, uh, our words also. Once it is told, uh, it cannot be you know, returned back. So once uh, the karma is done, it cannot be returned back. For example, I'm telling that you know, one time uh, someone went to uh, jail. Some devotees went to jail to distribute the Bhagavad Gita as it is the most famous Bhagavad Gita of ISKCON. So at that time, at that time, uh, he came across a jail inmate. So that person actually, uh, what was his crime? The crime that he committed is that he, uh, he blew a bomb in, in his locality. And due to blasting of this bomb, what happened is that it was not a, it was not a you know, play bomb like chocolate bomb. <laughs> it was a real bomb, you know, which you know the the miscreants use. So he blasted a bomb. Uh, why? Why he blasted the bomb in his locality? Uh, because uh, he was uh, doing Ganesh puja. He was doing Ganesh puja. Uh, in his in his locality and somebody disrupted the Ganesh Puja. So he blew a, um, he did a blast, <laughs> you know, he, you know, threw a bomb and due to this, uh, you know, uh, this is due to this bomb, several people were injured and someone was killed also. So then, um, then that is why he, he was sent to the jail. And he, he told that, uh, that person was telling that this was just due to some momentary mistake. Uh, it is just due to some momentary, um, uh, you know, losing the control of the mind, you know. So that is why he did it. But once it is done, you know, you, you cannot revert it back. That is the main thing. Mm. So similarly, this karma also, uh, this how... You know, if you want to understand how this law of karma works, uh, although basically we want to get out of this clutches of law of karma, but it is still important for us to know how it works. 
so therefore um, therefore uh, it is like an arrow shot once it is done you cannot revert back now that person is in the jail and so he cannot revert it back that momentary mistake uh, that has been uh, that is there it is there he cannot revert it back uh, even after he may be very very morose about that right so let us come to the next slide uh, anirudh can you read what is there written in this slide yes prabhu if one has killed an animal and one must kill one must be killed by a same animal this is called mamsa mam means me and sa means he as i am eating an animal that animal will have the opportunity to eat me so here you see that you know um, regarding the killing of animals animals are actually also part and parcel of god krishna they are also children of god so not only that if one kills another human being he should be punished but if he is killing an animal also he also has to be punished in a similar way so if one has killed uh, you know an animal that animal will kill him in his in in, in a further lifetime that is why you know this meat eating Uh, it is so dangerous people kill animals uh, for just for the you know for the sake of the taste of tongue mm-hmm. they don't they don't understand that they are uh, how much they are implicated and how much they there will be danger and due to this killing act so same way it is reciprocal you know the the way we act that same thing one gets in return so mamsa one tells mamsa mamsahar mamsahar bolta hai is so ma amsa so me and he as he is killed he, in that way same way it will be killed he will be killed by the same animal in latter lifetime and he will have the opportunity to eat the flesh of of you know oneself so in that way uh, everything in this in this material world is it under the jurisdiction of uh, devi durga mm. so everything durga devi manages very very perfectly mm. nothing is missed at all uh, nothing is missed uh, so you mm, should understand that uh, nothing happens by chance mm. if for example today corona virus has come uh, one should not feel that it is just you know out of you know by chance it came you know somehow due to some combination of chemicals some virus was created you know like this this is not the fact everything which is happening it is under the jurisdiction of the law of karma but for a pure devotee he is not under law of karma uh, right for example let's say you know shila prabhupad shila prabhupad when he was going to the western country uh, he was actually uh, his he you know uh, he was going to distribute the uh, the glories of god to the western countries and on the way on the way he got two heart attacks now for a pure devotee these two heart attacks this is not due to law of karma krishna wants to make the whole world see the dedication of shila prabhupad even after having two heart attacks on the jaladuta ship he went to the western country america and still have spread the holy names of krishna that is the that is the greatness of a pure devotee krishna wanted to show show that to the whole world that's why krishna gave that it doesn't come under the law of karma we are under the law of karma we are we are one, when one is practicing krishna consciousness gradually by the mercy of krishna one will be gradually relieved of this law of karma by the mercy of guru and krishna but uh, we have to understand that ye yatha mam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajami aham as one surrenders to krishna he will get the result accordingly somebody who is you know you know actually he is not surrendering mechanically he is just 
you know, showing off, then you will not be delivered of the law of karma. So therefore that depends on the consciousness of the person and Krishna as Paramatma is seeing everything. So the, the way one surrenders, whatever Krishna sees, what this person wants. Someone's degree of surrender may be more, someone's degree of surrender may be less. Depends. And then that way Krishna will reciprocate. So, therefore, we have to understand that we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, cheat Krishna. So there are two philosophies. One is called as Karma Bhad. Karma Bhad and Doiva Bhad. So karma bad means this philosophy karma bad, everything is in my hand. This is karma bad. And doiba bad is nothing is in my hand. Oh, oh no, let's go to sleep. Oh, let's nothing, everything is there. <laughs> and it is already retained, everything is retained, let's go to sleep. Everything is means whatever destiny is there, everything is fixed. And let us not do any work. And karma bad means everything is in my hand. If I want to, if I want and if I work hard, then I will surely get it. Mm. So that karma bad philosophy and daiva bad philosophy. So what is the right philosophy? Anyone would like to, you know, have a say over this? Sir, uh, Prabhu, can I say? Ah, yeah. Uh, I think Prabhu, karma bad. Okay. Because uh, Why? everything depends on the karma. So there is no destiny. Uh, the destiny is uh, depends on the karma that we do. Okay. Any other answer? Shubhadeep. হ্যাঁ প্রভু বুঝি ভগবানের উপর নির্ভরশীল হয়ে আমরা কাজ করে যাই তাতে উনি যেটা আমাদের জন্য এ করবেন সেটাই প্রাপ্য হবে ওকে হি ইজ টেলিং দ্যাট ইউ নো ডিপেন্ডিং অন কৃষ্ণ ইফ ইউ ডু দেন ইট উইল বি কৃষ্ণ উইল সি লিরন ডু লাইক টু গিভ এন প্রভু আই বিলিভ দ্যাট কর্মবাদ এন্ড দৈববাদ হ্যাভ লাইক देयर পার্শিয়াল পার্শিয়াল total make it our destiny it's 90% karma vad and some of daivya vad like and not everything is on in our hands but most of it is maybe is in our hands okay okay so um, so we have uh, very interesting opinions about these two philosophies karma vad and daivya vad see Actually, uh, everything is actually not in our hand. So completely this karma path philosophy is not, not perfect. And doiva path, that nothing is in my hand, that is also incorrect. So both these philosophies, karma path and doiva path, as a whole, both of them are actually incorrect. We can, we can uh, decide uh, what we want to do. For example, for example, someone uh, wants to become a very rich man. So he is working hard very much. He is working hard. So he's he is not a devotee. Let's you know, forget that he is a devotee. Devotees, the situation is different. Krishna is controlling, Krishna is taking care in that case. So let us you know, put, put aside the situation of devotees. Let us consider the situation of a normal materialistic person. It's, you know, those who are you know, not practicing uh, bhakti. So that person wants to become uh, he wants to become rich. So he is giving the effort, right? He is giving the effort. So 
that is being observed by the higher agents, the higher demigods who are in control. That is being, being overseen by Durga Devi. So now, but another thing will be seen. Not only is desire, but does he deserve? Did he perform the sufficient pious activities in his previous life so that this thing he's, he deserves to get? For example, he wants to become a Mukesh Ambani. So he is, you know, working so hard, so hard that, you know, to become as rich as Mukesh, Mukesh Ambani. So now, after, after working hard, he becomes a rich man, but not as rich as Mukesh Ambani. Why? Because to get that much wealth, like Mukesh Ambani, there is requirement of doing pious activities in one's previous life, that Sanchit Karma. Within that Sanchit Karma, you should deserve that. In his previous life, he performed sinful activities and he is desiring that, you know, uh, he wants to become Mukesh Ambani. Okay, his desires, according to his desires are there. He worked hard. He deserved something, some rich you know, thing he deserved. He becomes a rich man, but not even 1% of uh, you know, Mukesh Ambani. So that is how uh, this law of karma works. So as, you know, in a single, you know, in complete way, neither of these two theories are perfect. We should not see it idle that, you know, karma, everything is destined, you know, let us see it idle. Uh, and law of karma will not allow also us to see it idle. But for a devotee, he has every reason to work hard. Because he is doing everything for Krishna's satisfaction. So for a devotee, this case is in complete different angle, complete different dimension altogether. So that is the scenario. Does this, uh, anybody has any doubt regarding this? Anirul? Prabhu, I have a question. Yeah, ask. Prabhu, how we will uh, get to know that, uh, how much we will get even after doing uh, the karma? Like you said, uh, he, uh, he won't be able to uh, achieve as much as Mukesh Ambani. So, even if he's doing uh, more hard work and uh, giving more effort than Mukesh Ambani. How it is, Prabhu? See, uh, we cannot, no one can know what is this karma. There is no way to know. Who knows? Durga Devi knows. How can an ordinary soul uh, who is conditioned in this material world, how can he know what is his karma? Someone, you'll see someone, you know, he works hard, but he works hard, but not that much like another people, another, uh, another person is working hard, but still he becomes more rich than the person who is working more harder than him. You'll see this happens in this material world. So that is according to the law of karma. So one okay. cannot one cannot see that, but results will only show it. Whatever will happen when it comes, then only it will be seen. Otherwise, you cannot gauge what is there. Otherwise, he will become <laughs> he will become a you know, higher authority. So, but for a devotee, Krishna can change his karma. Krishna can change his karma. For example, you know, someone who is not supposed to become that much rich, um, but he tells Krishna that, okay, I will utilize whatever my wealth is there in your service. So Krishna can change that, prop, that karma, okay? You earn wealth, and by using that wealth, one can, you know, serve Krishna. So Krishna wants, then he can do. But for that, we have to be, you know, really that much, you know, surrendered to Krishna. We have to be okay, that much sincere. Okay. 
Okay, let's go to the next slide. You see, all of our actions are getting recorded. Nothing is hidden from the higher authorities. The records of every living entity is there. So who is keeping the record of every living entity? Do you have any idea? Anybody would like to ha do have any comment over this? Prabhu, I'm not just uh, unable to remember the name. Oh. Chitra Guk, Chitra Guk, is he Chitra Guk? Yes, what a correct answer. You're absolutely on the money, <laughs> on the target. <laughs> Bang on target, you see. Mm. Yamraj. Yamraj secretary is Chitra Gupta. So Chitra Gupta, very interesting personality, Chitra Gupta. Chitra Gupta is keeping the record of everyone, especially human beings, mm. human form of life. Every every details is recorded by Chitra Gupta. So when a uh, he has an incredible supercomputer, Chitra Gupta. An incredible supercomputer he has. All the records of all the living entities in this universe are kept. No human being or no country can make such a supercomputer. So, when a sinful person, after death, he goes to the court of Yamraj, Yamraj tells Chitra Gupta, to open his file, open his in his in his computer, he opens the uh, opens the file of that living entity. Uh, of course, his computer is not like the computer of ourselves, but still, you know, he has records. Amazing, subtle computer indeed. So then he then he, the judgment happens. What will happen to him? But a pure devotee who is practicing Krishna consciousness, he has perfected this life, he goes back to the spiritual world. He don't have to go to the court of Yamraj. So Chitra Gupta, interesting thing that how the name has come, Chitra Gupta. This Chitra Gupta, Chitra means photo. Chavi or photography, Chitra, image, photography, and Gupta. Gupta means hidden photography. So, Chitra Gupta is having these 13 agents who are watching all actions that we are doing. These 13 agents are sun, sky, moon, evening, day, night, directions, water land, demigods, air, and finally super soul, Paramatma, who is, who is non-different from Krishna. So, these are, sky is observing us. Uh, one, for the, the personification of sky is observing us. The personification of moon is observing us. Somehow or the other, uh, if we are, you know, somehow escaping from 12 of them, Finally, super soul who is sitting inside our heart is definitely seen. No one can escape from super soul. And he can, you know, at max, uh, he can escape from 12 other agents, the other uh, hidden cameras of Chitra Gupta. Mm. But he cannot escape super soul. That is the, you know, these are the um, 13, 13 cameras of Chitra Gupta. So, we cannot escape. We cannot, we, even if one tries to become, you know, tries to escape the laws of government, he cannot escape the law of universal government. So, we make our destiny by our karma. Whatever, you know, karma we perform, in that way we make our destiny. So, for example, now in this life, in this life, someone wants to become as rich as Mukesh Ambani, for example. He, he, he is having the desire, okay? 
now he is performing pious activities also he is not performing simple activity so th there are two types of activities one is uh, pious activity that is doing good to others being good to others like this and there is sinful activity doing bad to others harming like this and there is spiritual activity which is above bad activity and good activity which is transcendental actually which is spiritual activity like this chanting of hare krishna maha mantra so that is in the platform of the soul good activity bad activity both are in the uh, in the platform of body so like the giving water to the needy people in the scorching summer season that's a good activity in the platform of body pious activity is also called and bad activity is the harming others so uh, our spiritual activity is is actually ultimate good activity because it is in the platform of the soul atma mm -hmm. so we make our destiny by our karma mm -hmm. the karma you know it happens whatever acts so yes i was talking about someone who wants to become a very you know a very rich like mukesh ambani so now his desire is there and he does some good activity also so that in that way after accumulating 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 uh, it will when it will be sufficient uh, then according to the law of karma it will be sanctioned he can become as rich as mukesh ambani his desire is there and also he deserves it then it is sanctioned and who is sanctioning it krishna is sanctioning a super soul is sanctioning it so like that it works the law of karma so in a police in a, if in a city there is for example there is no police so what will happen in a city if there is no police then crime rate will increase very much everybody will freely commit crime so so therefore this law of karma it is the system is there so that it people learn so that people people can understand so that the soul which are coming in the material world they can understand that uh, they are not uh, they cannot do anything and everything otherwise if there is no punishment system what will happen everyone will everyone will completely be in ignorance everyone will do wrong nonsense activities and he will go scot free so that is why this law of karma is essential fear of god is the beginning of wisdom now actually there are four levels of how we can approach god fear desire duty and love so the lowest is fear out of fear there is god and if we break his laws we will be punished this is fear so this is the first step okay that can be the first step but what is the ultimate thing to love god but fear of god does bring wisdom it is actually the beginning of wisdom one starts to think how one should act one starts to do inquiry but it is not the ultimate way uh, ultimate way is to love god without any fear and mother yashoda loves god uh, even if she knows that krishna is god it doesn't matter to him matter to her mother yashoda thinks krishna is his child that much love is there in mother yashoda for krishna even if krishna shows entire universe in his in his mouth it doesn't matter much to mother yashoda still mother yashoda loves krishna as his dear child that is ultimate stage and that stage one should desire one should not remain in the fear zone only and should go above fear zone and krishna is loving god 
he is uh, he is a death personified for uh, uh, demons like kangsa uh, hiranyakashipu but for devotees like prahlad maharaj he is very love lovable and very 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 loving so the maya devi or durga devi durga devi we see there is trishul in the hand of durga devi and with that trishul he is she is you know killing the uh, asura what is the name of the asura you know maisha asura durga devi is killing maisha asura so this trishul this three three tridents this uh, trident trishul represents these three things adhyatmik klesh adi daivik klesh and adi bhautik klesh so durga devi is inflicting this suffering of this through this trishul of adhyatmik klesh adi bhautik klesh and adi daivik klesh adhyatmik is suffering due to one's mind and senses you know people also commit suicide due to this you know suffering due to mind and own mind and body and senses this is adhyatmik klesh adi bhautik klesh is the suffering due to others other living entities and adi daivik klesh is what adi daivik klesh is suffering due to natural calamities like flood cyclone like this so these trishul of adhyatmik klesh adi bhautik klesh and adi daivik klesh he is being inflicted by durga devi in order to purify us in order to make us understand that this material world is not the ultimate place of happiness one should desire to go back home back to the spiritual world so this is the process of purification so the sufferings make us understand just like you know one remembers god at the time of difficulty in the corona time people are remembering god uh, when there is very much enjoyment you know people forget god just like if some of if any one of you get the chance to remain in rashtrapati bhavan for whole lifetime will you, will you ever remember uh, you know this you know spiritual classes um you forget you will get so much enjoyment so much happiness and <laughs> of so called material happiness so there is tendency to forget god when one is in too much material facilities so therefore the sufferings like this corona virus these are also inflicted upon us in order to remember that we are we are not going to be happy in this material world this material world is a place of suffering so how to get out of this shackle of the law of karma so krishna tells in the bhagavad gita that only by devotional service one can one can get out of the entanglement on this of this material world krishna recommends manmana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji nam namaskuru ma vibhashishi satyante pati jane priyo shive so krishna tells that um, to perform devotional service bhakti yog so devotional service begins with the chanting of the hari krishna maha mantra by devotional service these three things we get what is devotional service bestow upon us it grants knowledge to make right choices in life bhakti yoga devotional service it bestows higher taste to give up lower desires it bestows higher taste this process of bhakti it is so so nice so enjoyable the higher taste is there by by getting the higher taste one forgets the lower taste it minimizes the reactions of past bad karma and gives inner strength to endure residual reactions 
suppose you are supposed to you know get a heavy punishment due to our past sinful activities but we are getting some punishment krishna has reduced mercifully maximum punishment so one should be grateful to krishna when something reversals happen in our life we can think that something more intense should have happened something more big thing was supposed to happen but krishna mercifully reduced it in that way one can be grateful to krishna and one can have the inner strength to endure the residual reactions of karma so uh, the best way of uh, to get out of this entanglement of the material world is by chanting of the hare krishna maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, 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 ram. so i end here